I'm Joel. Uh, this is a, a little story about uh, a project uh, that I started at home uh, with Nerves in, in Phoenix to kind of help me with a problem uh, that I was working through at home. Uh, I want to start off by uh, giving, giving some credit to Paul Wilson uh, at Elixir Comp EU earlier this year. Um, had a really great talk there, uh, kind of inspired me to get a little more into Nerves. And uh, also some folks that I work with, uh, Scott Massio and Dave Shaw, uh, they really motivated me to, to pick up a side project, to kind of learn some things. Uh, I am new to Elixir, uh, I'm, I'm still learning. Uh, I will say, you know, if you find, if you're looking at my GitHub repository or find some slides in here with code on them that could be improved, I am, I am game to pair with you. Uh, so if you want to pair a program and try and improve this a little bit, uh, it's all, all the code's going to be open source. So uh, I'm glad, glad to have anybody uh, help me learn a little bit more. Um, I work at a great company called Cover My Meds. Uh, we're located in Ohio. Um, we also have some remote workers. Uh, some of them are here in the audience. Uh, but we pride ourselves on being one of the greatest companies to work for in Ohio and um, really we think uh, nationwide. Uh, and we help, you know, our, our goal is to help our patients uh, get the meds they need to be healthy. That's what we do. And thanks for Cover, thanks for cover My Meds for making it possible for, for me to be here. Um, also, uh, I, I tend to think that I have a pretty amazing family. Uh, I was showing Justin and Frank. My, my wife made this really cool I Love Nerds t-shirt. Uh, Nerves t-shirt. I love nerds too. Uh, so she's great. She's been very supportive um, as I uh, work on my little pet projects at home. Uh, she makes sure that there's... I'm going to take this off. She makes sure that uh, the kids are taken care of for me. And uh, you know, I think Santa Claus also is pretty fond of our kids. Uh, he, he likes to, every Christmas, he likes to bring uh, some of these things to our home. Uh, so we have, have lots of, uh, we love technology uh, as a family. And early on with, with my children, uh, you know, I thought these things were great because you know, I want to expose them to whatever technology I can. And the touch screens, you know, these are Kindle Fires, if you can't tell. Um, we're really, you know, into the Amazon uh, ecosystem and Prime, and there's lots of great uh, learning content and games that they can get on their Kindles, uh, which is all great. Um, when they're younger, you know, they're learning a lot quickly. Um, but after a while, it, it's seemed like it, it started to change the way they play. And uh, what it turns into is sort of this situation where playing has turned into just staring at a screen, kind of like a lot of adults we know probably. But um, for me, it was a little, a little disturbing to just see my kids staring at the screen all the time, uh, especially you know, when I'm trying to get their attention. Or you know, I walk, maybe I walk past their bedroom, and it looks something like this. And, you know, so I see that they're, they're kind of uh, avoiding some of their responsibilities, and I'm trying to teach them to be uh, good, responsible uh, members of the family, take care of uh, some of the, the things that they need to do at home. Um, so I think about this for a while, and uh, you know, I remember uh, a friend of mine actually, this is actually not my house, by the way, just for what it's worth. Um, a friend of mine mentioned that, and, and I saw this on Facebook, so it's still happening. Um, some, some parents approach this problem with uh, a, changing, a, a changing Wi-Fi password uh, every day, and you know, a little sticky note or a list that they tape to the refrigerator to tell their kids what chores need to be done before they uh, get access to the, the Wi-Fi for the home. Uh, and this is, this is great. Um, and I think it works pretty well, and actually, you know, you could say we tried like a paper prototype of this uh, early on to see how it works in my house. Uh, and what, 
what ended up happening is, you know, we, we change the password every day, but um, I have, you know, you saw in the picture earlier, I have three kids and uh, they all have different chores. They get them done at different rates. And so it's hard to manage that. Uh, also, I have my phone and my laptop that are on Wi-Fi that I don't want to have to change my password twice for those, and my wife is really not a big fan of this either. And beyond that, like think about everything that you have on, on your Wi-Fi network at home. I have a TV and a printer and things you just, some other um, random nerves projects, uh, things you just kind of uh, forget about after a while. So I had this idea. I can build a website to show these kids their chores. And on the website, uh, I can have them sort of navigate through the chores and check them off as they get them done. Uh, and I can make that something similar to what you might see at the resort here. Uh, when you connect to the Wi-Fi here, it prompts you for your name and room number. Um, but in, instead, uh, I'll ask them if they got their chores done and which ones they got done and sort of keep track of it that way. Uh, also, you know, this is not a new thing, I haven't invented it. it it's a, a concept called a captive portal. Um, going, going forward, um, I've heard of other people sort of trading uh, Wi-Fi wi access points, building them on a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's an inter interesting little project. Um, but I also um, been watching uh, these folks uh, at ElixirConf in past years talking about nerves, and uh, I saw how easy it is. It seems like a very easy sort of thing to um, build an embedded system and uh, start your Elixir app up uh, when the system boots. And uh, actually, I have a quote from, from Justin yesterday. People shouldn't be afraid of embedded systems development. So um, I felt uh, a little brave uh, to, to start this endeavor, uh, but it was, uh, it, it seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, but a little warning, um, captive portals and uh, random Wi-Fi access points can be used for evil. Um, so please play nice and, and don't do any evil things with the stuff that I'm gonna show you today. Um, and uh, beyond just my project, I think uh, a web UI is important. So, um, and the idea that, ha that we can have Phoenix apps running on uh, our little embedded nerve systems, uh, it's important because, you know, just like my kids have these little screens that they carry around with them, um, just about everybody does. And they all have access to Wi-Fi and they all have browsers on them, uh, and it's way easier and, and more intuitive for, for our users, uh, at least in my opinion, to navigate a web page with, because they're used to doing that already um, versus looking on a tiny little uh, liquid crystal display to read a few messages or a few words in a message to comprehend that or blinking light codes and, and push buttons. So um, I think Phoenix apps as, a, as an embedded system UI makes, makes sense. And uh, it's a little more about my approach. Uh, I want to learn Elixir. I said that earlier. Um, I feel like, uh, although you know, I don't have much experience with it, um, it sounds like Phoenix is able to perform pretty well on less hardware than, say, um, you know, I'm a Rails developer, so. Uh, you know, it's hard to install uh, and, and run Rails on, on a little Raspberry Pi like this. Uh, it's not very performant. Um, and Nerves, uh, you know, I can uh, include lots of additional apps uh, in an Umbrella project. Um, there's other, lots of talk about Umbrella uh, at the conference here, so I won't uh, go into detail about that. Um, and then start my Phoenix app uh, up right as the system boots up automatically. And then uh, Nerves also manages other Linux dependencies with build root, which is pretty handy. Um, so I needed a way to 
uh, segue from talking about more general uh, topics to getting into details. Uh, and my friend Dave Shaw, my coworker I mentioned earlier, um, I was telling him this problem and he's like, oh, I got you, Joel, just hold on a minute. And, you know, he sends this to me right away. So, and I had to put it in, so uh, the cat on the segue. So that gets me uh, into talking more about the details uh, of my umbrella app. Um, so you can see here, I've got um, firmware, which sort of initializes the system, gets the network set up, um, there are some Linux dependencies, like I mentioned earlier, that uh, kind of need initialized, so it takes care of that. I have a Phoenix U user interface. Um, that's pretty simple. Um, basically, just displays the, the chores, and there's some admin functions for adding chores and things. Um, captive portal redirector is kind of what I called it, but it's basically um, when you connect to the system over Wi-Fi um, without some way to redirect that request. Uh, I end up, you know, say if you connect and go to elixirlang.org uh, and I respond with a chore list um, without the redirect and it just shows like that's uh, elixirlang.org. Uh, that's, for me, it didn't seem like a very, it was kind of confusing and didn't seem like a very good user, uh, user experience. Um, so we redirect to um, the Phoenix app that's running on the device. And uh, I have a chore repository. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. And router controls that sort of wrap up some system calls that, because uh, I wanted to separate concerns and I felt like I could use it in both the user interface and in uh, the Nerves app directly. Uh, so to reference those, um, in Umbrella, in your dependencies, uh, in your mix file. It's pretty simple. Uh, pull up. This, is the, uh, this is the Nerves app, so I don't reference the chore repository, say, from here, but uh, I do use the router controls and start the Phoenix app up run and running and things like that. Um, so that kind of gets the little, uh, a little preview of uh, the pieces of, of the application. Uh, or the project. And uh, next up, talk a little bit about uh, the systems that are available in NERVS. Uh, this is a sampling. I think there are more. Um, I, I mentioned uh, I'm using Raspberry Pi 3, but I did consider some of the other options. Um, but for me, the built in capabilities for Raspberry Pi 3, you know, it's already got, it's already got the Wi Fi adapter built in. Um, and it just seemed like the logical choice. Uh, adding some Linux dependencies, I need, so these are listed of extra dependencies that I needed on my system. And Nerve systems, uh, they're pretty stripped down. There's not much extra shipped with them. Um, it makes them boot fast, makes them small, uh, but it also makes it less useful for me. So I ended to add uh, some of these dependencies myself. Um, DNS mask is uh, for DNS and DHCP purposes. Uh, host APD is, is able to um, basically um, set up your, your Wi-Fi access point on your device. IP tables is for um, creating your firewall rules. And net filter um, is sort of an extension to IP tables to, to filter out that traffic some more. Uh, and ARP is for uh, some address resolution purposes, so I can sort of map an IP address to a MAC address, which is very useful for me. Um, so after I find the dependencies that I need to add to my system, uh, and of course this is changing, thanks to Justin, he's making it much easier, um, but for, uh, for what I've gone through, um, basically go find your um, nurse project, so in my case, it was nerves underscore system underscore RPI, RPI3. Um, so that's the GitHub repository for, uh, for the system that I'm interested in. Clone that um, onto a Linux box. Um, run make menu config to pick a bunch of options. Pick these options uh, for the dependencies that I'm 
needing on my system and uh, build the system and then set this uh, very important uh, environment variable so that uh, when you compile your app, it's able to find your new system instead of trying to pull down the one from, uh, from hex. Uh, additional info about build root, uh, sp more specific to, um, to nerves, is that there's actually three options in, uh, in nerves. There's a menu config, which uh, gives you some access to some native libraries and applications. In my case, that's where DNS mask and, and host APD were located. Um, there's a, a Linux menu config uh, version, which gives you access to IP tables and net filter and uh, BusyBox menu config, which uh, has lots of, of handy sort of developer type tools like um, Vim and Grep and things like that. So. Nerve system BR uh, is a GitHub repository that sort of explains this in much more detail. Um, it's, it's got a really great README. So if you get into the point where you need to build, build your own system, I would reference that README and uh, make sure you read, read the whole thing because uh, it, it's kind of tempting to want to wanna, um, sort of skip ahead or uh, it's, it's too, too long, didn't read sort of mentality. Um, but I think you can find yourself in a little bit of trouble if you, you try and skip parts of that. So recommend, it's a good, good read. Uh, build root looks like this. It's, a, it's actually a pretty easy to navigate, um, somewhat easy to navigate user interface. Uh, you can search with the slash forward slash command. It'll bring up a little search box and, and help, that helps you find some things. Uh, when you're done, exit, and you'll be prompted to save your changes. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, run run the make uh, command to to build your new system out. Um, so after that, after I've got my new system, my custom system set up with host APD and DNS mask and all these other great live uh, packages to help me um, set up my uh, captive portal. Uh, there are some configuration files to um, sort of configure those tools so that they're useful for me. Uh, this is uh, a small example of what you might find in DNS mask. Um, important, one of the, the more important bits here is that DHCP range uh, kind of gives you an idea of how many IP addresses you can support um, and you can, uh, you can set up uh, address for router and DNS server, uh, if those aren't just your, your um, local IP address. Um, this is an example of host APD config. Uh, in my case, I just have a, an SSID called chores underscore net. Uh, it's actually uh, capable of, of setting up more, uh, more uh, supporting your typical Wi-Fi security protocols. Um, but if you start to turn on things like WPA or, or whatever, um, make sure you go back to build root. There may be some other additional options that you need to choose to make those, to work, to make those work. Um, just something to be aware of. And uh, to get those files on my system, I need to sort of have a special directory structure within my prod, within my NERVS uh, application directory. Uh, so there's this root FS additions folder, uh, and that's the default location. It, I think it's configurable, so if you don't like it there, you can move it. Um, but as the name sort of implies, I mean, anything under that directory will be placed at the system root when, when uh, you burn your SD card and uh, it boots up, so that's where you'll find those files and that's how you get them onto your nerves uh, system. And uh, there's this other file here called Earl and it, which um, sort of sets up some startup parameters for your, for your application uh, and nerves and Erlang parameters for things to start up. Some IP tables commands. I'm not sure how interesting these are, but um, 
for what it's worth, um, how, how this application works, we, um, you can see we can uh, mark uh, new connections with a, a 99, a mark of 99. And then uh, low, low, the next line down, you can see that we're uh, anything with that, that mark of 99, we redirect to um, port 80. And port 80 is where the, uh, the redirector application is, is running, that plug application. Um, so any new traffic will get marked with 99. And traffic with the 99 mark gets routed to this uh, plug app, which will redirect you to the Captive Portal Phoenix app, uh, which, which presents you with chores. Once you get through the chores, um, and it's not on this slide because it's, it's probably not a good reason for it, but, um, but anyway, so once you get through your chores, we, we can remove that mark from your connection, and then the whole internet is uh, available to you again. So, so that's how it works. Um, my user interface is a, a Phoenix app, as I mentioned before. Um, I used the no ecto option when I created this app because um, the latest version of Phoenix and the, the version of ecto that it supports by default um, wants to use, uh, really just has uh, good support for Postgres or MySQL. And for my application, that, that was way overkill for what I needed. Um, so I just uh, just turned off Ecto for my Phoenix app and, and dealt with that a different way. Um, again, this starts automatically when NERVS starts up. It's a pretty simple application. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have uh, one controller that basically gets you your first chore, gets you your next chore, and as you get through all the chores, um, it will uh, remove your connection. And so it's pretty straightforward that way. And that's, my, that's kind of my, my motto is to keep it simple. Right. Persistence. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Ecto was kind of not a great option. ETS, the syntax is a, a little weird for me. Uh, and Amnesia was, uh, felt, it also felt kind of overkill for me. Um, but this really great guy, um, Chris Dutton of Rose Point, uh, He's also a NERVS core contributor. He built this um, library called Persistent Storage, which makes it, which makes it really easy to um, persist data onto a NERVS system, particularly. Um, it, it actually, um, so it'll persist your, your data to a disk, uh, but also keep an in-memory cache of it. So it's, it's sort of quick to retrieve, um, but it's saved on disk so that it's there between booting cycles and uh, so that's helpful. So I went with that option. Uh, worked well for me. Here's a, an example of what that sort of looks like. Uh, I have a config file that uh, sets up the, the file in different location vers uh, in, say, um, local dev mode versus when it's running on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, NERFs actually set you up, uh, sets your app up in uh, read-only file system, which is uh, good from the standpoint of making sure that it's uh, reliable, and if you lose power, you know, it'll start back up. But it um, means that you need to put the files that you're changing in a different directory. So, um, so that's kind of important here. And then uh, to, to save and retrieve uh, data, it's, it's a pretty simple key value store. Um, it's really easy to use. So I recommend that. Um, testing. Uh, testing is important to me. Um, Paul Wilson sort of dealt with this issue in his talk in Elixir Coffee U as well. Um, in, in my case, I'm, I've got lots, lots of um, operating system calls. And uh, you know, this is an example. Uh, I want to test this and write some tests around um, things that call system.cmd and uh, set up some expectations on what that command re returns. Um, so I felt like this is not really a big deal. I've written tests a lot, a lot in the past. Uh, I'll just go and find a, a good mocking library and mock off that CMD function. Uh, 
That's easy, right? That's no big deal. So get on Google, search Elixir mocking library, and this is like the one of the first uh, results that come up. Uh, so this this got me a little more nervous about my decision because I was afraid of uh, the wrath of Jose's friendliness. Uh, but I found a, a blog post that he wrote, uh, explained it in uh, some pretty clear, concise detail, um, and, and he was right, really. Um, you know, what I was trying to do is, uh, he, he puts it as um, mocking as a verb versus mocking as a noun, um, which is maybe a good way to put it. I, I felt like I was just looking at that one function and trying to mock it for my one test. Um, but really, what I needed to do was sort of set up this, uh, uh, I call it a fake system. Um, it's, it's something that I can stand in for the system uh, when I'm not running in production mode. And, and testing, like setting up for calling these operating system commands, like I can't set that up on my Mac. Uh, some of these libraries don't really run on Mac very well. So anyway, uh, config changes uh, between dev and test. I'm sorry, uh, test and production. Uh, made that really easy to do, and I just have uh, you know, this is an example of the fake system where if I pass in ARP minus and some specific command line options, it returns a, a value that's based off of something that I saw in IEX, in an IEX session, so I know what it's supposed to look like. Um, and I can write my test assertions against that. Uh, another really interesting side effect I found of doing this, um, and it sort of saved me, Justin in his talk yesterday mentioned how he felt like he had started to become uh, an SD, a pro at, at swapping SD cards. Um, I kind of felt that way too, and I didn't want to keep swapping SD cards for uh, say the, the Phoenix app changes that I was making. Uh, so what I ended up doing is actually turning on the fake system when I'm running in dev mode too. So I can start Phoenix up and I can run it and uh, you know it, it performs uh, good enough for my tests and, and I can do a lot of dev work that way. So that's helpful. Um, so I have another segue. <laughs> I actually have uh, a little bit of a demo that I'd like to do and I need some volunteers. So I've never actually, just full disclosure, I've never actually had as many people in this room on this little Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi before. Uh, I just have three kids at home that have tried it out, and uh, so I'm, I'm a little unsure about whether it'll perform very well or just completely fall flat. Um, let's try it. Um, so if you look, and if you remember earlier, there is a, a, a network connection, a Wi-Fi network called ChoresNet. You should be able to connect that. And uh, let's see how it does. Uh, I actually have um, monitoring sort of that administrative console. Um, I will say that it probably works better on, for me anyway, for, for just demo purposes, uh, if you try and connect with a laptop versus an iPhone or something, but it should still work. And you let me know if it's connecting or if it's, I see some connections coming in. No, okay. Okay. There are some folks who have made it um, one person actually has made it all the way through to get to the internet, and and now it's reloading. <laughs> so, um, if there's one person that actually made it through, I wonder if you could maybe raise your hand. And uh, nobody. Oh, okay. Well, I actually have so. Because you're so great at participating, I actually have some swag from Cover My Meds. So thank you, Cover My Meds, if you want to come up. There's actually, um, 
is one of the chores that you have to do up here anyway, because you're supposed to give me a big high five, right? <laughs> Thank you. So. so anyway, we've got some con connections there. Um, at least one person made it through. It works pretty well for our three kids at home. Uh, so thanks for participating. Uh, so back to my slides. Um, this worked out much better at home than it did here, uh, but uh, there, is, there is more to the story, so let's, let's go through it. Um, wrong direction. First off, I exposed the kids to this idea. Uh, I turned turn the, the Wi-Fi router on, uh, change the Kindles to connect to it um, by default. And they're like, wow, this is so cool. Dad, you built this thing, and it helps me know what I need to do in the morning. I can get it done. And uh, I, I can't believe like you made this, really? Um, so they're, they're really into it. They're excited. Um, and I don't know, who here has kids? Like, most, like almost everybody, it seems like. Um, they kind of, like, they have a short attention span, right? So after they get their chores done, it, it's like right back to the norm. And, um, and then also, you know, <laughs> days later, it's, it's sort of like the novelty's worn off a little bit. So they're kind of, <laughs> Dad, we have to keep using this app. Uh, and so that's a little discouraging for me. Uh, so I stopped and, and went back and did a little retrospective, personal retrospective on my project. Um, and I, re I realized uh, something really good came out of it, actually. Um, a bad, yes. I need a badge system. <laughs> so if only I would have gone to the training on Wednesday. Um, but, but seriously, um, the chores are good. Like they, they did serve a great purpose, uh, and they got the job done. Um, but there were some things missing. Um, I was just giving them a list of things to do. And nobody likes to be told what to do. Uh, that's not fun. Um, so I introduced some fun activities, like go give your mom a hug. Go give your dad a high five, right? That's, that's OK. Um, Yes, I have some, some interaction with other people. Instead of just going to your room and cleaning and putting your toys away, um, how about spend some time with a family member? How about go play with the family pet? How about go outside and get some exercise or read a book to your sister? Um, and this was really, really enlightening for me, actually. Um, what ended up happening after this is I found that the kids were spending lots of time playing without the tablets. And they feel they're spending more time together. Um, like I said, they're leaving the tablets behind. Uh, I feel like they're spending more quality time with me, which I enjoy. Uh, and it's all because of this little personal project that I started. Um, so it makes me feel really great about doing it. and all those late nights with Frank on Skype or whatever. Um, thank you. Thank you for the time, Frank. Um, and you know, the experiment, uh, experiment's not over. Like we have some other things that we want to try out with it and as a family, um, maybe tie in uh, some positive reinforcement. So beyond just go play and do your chores in between play, but maybe a cookie jar a Bluetooth cookie jar that opens up when you get your chores done, and you get this little treat. Um, the, the Bluetooth egg carton, I'm not sure where that fits in, but maybe. Um, and, you know, there's the idea that uh, my wife has, and it's kind of like she's got more of an entrepreneurial spirit than maybe I do, but. Um, you know, she's curious, curious if we might actually be able to market this and get some folks to, to buy it um, off the shelf at uh, Best Buy or something. So who knows? Maybe we'll be on Shark Tank one day. 
Um, closing statements. Uh, I think hacking on side proje projects is a great idea. Um, I'm, I'm really thankful for my friends for encouraging me to spend the time and do this. Uh, I feel like I know Elixir a little well after this uh, experiment. And uh, it's really good if you can include your family so you're not uh, sort of leaving them in, in the dark about what you're doing and spending all your time in the basement alone. Um, and even if uh, they take a turn that you didn't expect, uh, embrace it, because that's how you learn. And uh, of course, Elixir, Nerves, and Phoenix, it's great success. So, uh, special thanks to the Nerves team. Uh, pretty much everybody on the team, I feel like I've had some interaction uh, with, and, and they've been very supportive, um, not just for me, but uh, the, the Slack channel and Elixir. Uh, they are um, very helpful for everybody. Um, they're always there, and, uh, and we're just a great, great group of people. They're doing some great things to make building embedded systems um, really um, an easy, I won't say easy, but um, really um, not intimidating. And uh, I appreciate that. Also, my friends or, or my family for putting them through this, and uh, cover my meds or, and some other folks on on Slack who I I don't really know their names because you don't show your names on Slack. So um, there are some aliases. Um, if you see this, thank you for for your support. Uh, in the, over the past few months, I know I've asked a lot of questions, and everybody's been very helpful. Um, these are the GitHub repositories. Um, the first one is for the, uh, the main nerves application, and the second one is for that custom nerve system that you'll need to, to run it on. And my Twitter handle, if you did make it through the chores, you, you, should, you should know that um, one of the chores is to mention me on Twitter, so I'll be looking for that. And that's all I have, so. Thank you.